nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Accurate precision. second example, the same two particles are coming together. They may have enough energy, but they are now oriented differently, and they are not oriented correctly, so they bounce off and they do not react. In our final example here, our two reactant particles come together with both proper energy and proper orientation, so you can see on our product side, we have a new substance. Kinetics in equilibrium, key concept two. The rate of a chemical reaction is influenced by the temperature, concentration, surface area, presence of a catalyst, and only when gas is present, pressure. This is all about collision theory. If I increase the temperature, the particles are moving faster and there's a greater chance of a collision. This increases the reaction rate. There's an increase in concentration of our solution. There's literally more particles available for collisions, so our reaction rate goes up. If we take a look at surface area, we have to have a solid. We grind it up, we break it down into more pieces. There's more particles exposed. This will lead to more collisions and therefore a higher reaction rate. And finally, if we're looking just at gases, when I increase the pressure, I push the particles together. There have to be more collisions when they're pushed together and therefore the reaction rate increases. Kinetics and equilibrium key concept three. The energy dynamics of a reaction can be represented using a potential energy diagram. The diagram can be utilized to determine delta H or heat of reaction, the potential energy of the reactants, the potential energy of the products, potential energy of the activated complex, or the activation energies of the forward or reverse reactions. Now, our example up here shows all six of those arrows on a potential energy diagram. So when we talk about total potential energy of any part of this, we are measuring from the bottom up. So letter B here, which is in the beginning, represents our total potential energy of the reactants, because we always start with reactants. We always end with products, which means letter F here is the total potential energy of our products. Now letter D, the tallest of these, goes all the way to the top. That's where our activated complex is, so it's the total potential energy of the activated complex. Now one of the most important arrows to remember is letter C. This is the delta H, or the enthalpy, or the heat of the reaction. This is always the difference between the products and the reactants, or where you start and where you end. Okay, and letter A and letter E are both of your activation energies. Letter A is for the forward reaction to go up that hill, the forward direction, and letter E is to go up that hill again, but in the reverse direction. Kinetics and equilibrium key concept four. The heat of reaction delta H is equal to the potential energy of the products minus the potential energy of the reactants. A negative delta H is an exothermic reaction, while positive delta H is endothermic. If we have a negative delta H, we're an exothermic reaction overall, which means that overall we are releasing energy. If we look at the potential energy diagram that goes with an exothermic reaction, we see that we're starting high and ending low. If we look at an endothermic reaction, we have a positive delta H, we are overall absorbing energy. 
when we look at the potential energy diagram for an endothermic reaction, we see that we're starting low and ending high. Always remember that the heat of reaction delta H is the heat of the products minus the heat of the reactants. Kinetics and equilibrium key concept five. A catalyst speeds up the rate of a reaction by providing an alternate reaction pathway with a lower activation energy. The PE of the products and the PE of the reactants remains the same as does the delta H value for the reaction. Now, if you take a look at our example, the uh, potential energy diagram without a catalyst has a very tall hill, a very high activation energy to get over. With a catalyst, that hill comes down, that gets lower. Now also notice that the beginning reactants and the ending products remains the same. Those do not change. Also, because delta H is PE of the products minus PE of the reactants, that value would not change either. Kinetics and equilibrium key concept six. Many chemical and physical changes are reversible. In a closed system, if the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction, the system is said to be in dynamic equilibrium. In equilibrium, only the reaction rates are equal, everything else is constant. We tend to focus on forward reactions in chemistry often, but many reactions can go in the reverse direction as well. When we have both occurring, we can achieve an equilibrium. Always look for a double arrow in your equation to indicate that we are at equilibrium. At equilibrium, the rates of the forward and the reverse reaction are equal to one another. However, the concentrations of reactants and products are not necessarily equal to one another. Instead, they are constant. We should not see them changing at all when equilibrium has occurred. Kinetics and equilibrium key concept seven. Equilibrium systems can involve phase changes, saturated solutions, and chemical reactions. In our first example here, we have water, and it's in a closed system. The rate of evaporation equals the rate of condensation. In a saturated solution only, the rate of dissolving will equal the rate of crystallization. And then for chemical reactions, the rate of the forward reaction always equals the rate of the reverse reaction when we have equilibrium. Kinetics and equilibrium key concept eight. If a system at equilibrium is exposed to a stress, the system will respond by shifting equilibrium in order to counteract the change. The Chatelier's principle can be used to predict the response of an equilibrium to such a stress. Stress, we wanna get rid of it. We want to relieve that stress. When I increase the concentration of a reactant or product, we're going to move away from that substance to get rid of the excess. If I have a decreasing concentration of a reactant or product, now we're going to go the opposite. We don't have enough, we want more. We're going to shift toward that substance. Pressure is a little bit tricky. We have pressure affecting gases only. And so when we have an increase in pressure and we want to reduce that pressure, we want to shift towards the fewer moles of gas. So we've got to count up the number of moles of gas by adding up the coefficients. There's a decrease in pressure. We don't have enough. We want to make more. We're going to shift towards more moles of gas. An increase in temperature is the same thing as having too much heat. So we're going to move away from wherever the heat appears in the chemical equation. There's a decrease in temperature. There's not enough heat. We're going to move toward the heat to counteract that stress. Finally, adding a catalyst results in no overall shift because a catalyst increases the speed of the forward and reverse reactions equally. Kinetics and equilibrium key concept nine. Systems in nature tend to undergo changes that release energy, exothermic, while moving towards a state of increased randomness, higher entropy. Now heat always flows from high to low. This is because systems in nature tend to release their energy. Now, if you want to determine whether a chemical reaction is endothermic or exothermic, you want to go to table I. If delta H values for a chemical reaction are negative, that means that the reaction is exothermic. If the delta H value is positive, it's endothermic. Entropy, which is randomness, chaos, disorder, messiness, whichever term works for you, pick one. Entropy can be determined by looking at a chemical reaction and focusing on the phases. Gases have the highest amount of entropy. Solids 
have the lowest. So you want to look at your chemical equation from left to right to see what happened to the phases to determine the increase or decrease in your messiness. But we never off, always zone to the break of dawn. S E I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye.